What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. And today, we're going to be continuing our series on new dinosaurs that have been found in 2024. Today, we're gonna to be talking about nine of these brand new dinosaurs. This next batch of dinosaurs is really interesting, so make sure you let me know in the comments which one you think is your favorite. Without further ado, the first dinosaur on our list actually isn't a dinosaur at all, but the footprints of a dinosaur. These footprints are called Fujianopus, and they were made in China 95 million years ago. Fujianopus only had two toe marks on it, which means that it probably came from a raptor because the curved claw on a raptor foot would have been held up as it walked. What's interesting about Fujianopus is that these tracks are about 14 inches long, which are huge for a raptor. For reference, 14 inches is only two shoe sizes smaller than Shaquille O'Neal. It's estimated that the dinosaur that made these tracks would have been about six feet tall and 18 feet long. That would have made this raptor just as big, if not bigger, than the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park. Now while this raptor is ginormous, it's actually not the only massive raptor that we know of. Several species of raptors were able to reach this size, like Utah Raptor, Dakota Raptor, Achillobator, and Austroraptor. However, the paleontologists that found Fujianopus determined that these tracks were actually from a Trudontid. Trudontids were close cousins to Dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor and Deinonychus, but they would have had a slimmer body and a smaller curved claw. Currently, the largest trudontid is Latena venatrix. Now, while it's hard to confirm because there's no bones associated with these tracks, but Fujianopus may actually have been bigger than Latena venatrix and may have been the biggest trudontid ever found. The next dinosaur found this year was Chachisaurus. This small dinosaur lived in Argentina 90 million years ago. Argentina at the time would have been dominated almost exclusively by sauropods and theropods, some of which would have been some of the biggest dinosaurs ever to exist. Some of these massive dinosaurs were Argentinosaurus and Mapusaurus. But Chachisaurus was an ornithopod, and that makes it one of the only ornithopods to live in Argentina at that time. What's interesting about Chachisaurus is that it belongs specifically to a type of dinosaurs called Elasmarians. These dinosaurs would have been smaller relatives of dinosaurs like Iguanodon. So Elasmarians evolved tails that looked very similar to theropod dinosaurs, which they're not even closely related to. Their tail vertebra were shaped in a way that allowed for really big muscles in their tails that would attach to their legs and would help them run really, really fast. Another fun fact about Chachisaurus is that it lived alongside Cytosaurus, which was another new dinosaur that was found this year. If you missed me talk about Cytosaurus, then you should go check out my last video that I did about the new dinosaurs found this year. Next up is Jingiella, which lived in China 149 million years ago. While not much is known about Jingiella itself, we do know that it was a sauropod, and more specifically, it was a Mementisaur. Mementisaurs had really long necks, even for long neck dinosaurs. Take Mementisaurus, for example, which is the namesake of the group of dinosaurs. The biggest specimen of this genus was estimated to be about 85 feet long, but just its neck alone would have been about 39 feet long. So almost half of its body length would have been just its neck. So Jingiella and other Mementisaurs had a huge advantage over other sauropods. They would have been able to reach up way higher into trees, or they would have used their long necks to sweep across way more ground. Tiamat was another sauropod that was found this year, and it was found in Brazil 100 million years ago. This dinosaur also isn't known for much. Only a few tail vertebrae were found. But just these few tail vertebrae were enough to show that this dinosaur was a titanosaur and was actually one of the earliest titanosaurs that we know of. Titanosaurs were a really special group because they were one of the longest reigning and most successful sauropods to ever exist. Back in the Jurassic and early Cretaceous, there were many different types of sauropods. But by the middle of the Cretaceous, there was a minor extinction called the Cenomanian Turonian Faunal Turnover. This extinction hit just about every type of sauropod except for the titanosaurs. After this minor extinction, titanosaurs spread all over the globe and were able to fill up a lot of the niches of these older sauropods. Tiamat lived right before this minor extinction, so it would have competed with all these older types of sauropods that lived in Brazil. Next up on this list is Kayakursor, which lived in Russia 120 million years ago. This dinosaur was really interesting because it essentially looked just like an ostrich. This dinosaur had really long legs, with a short thigh bone and really long shin and feet bones. Having a relatively shorter thigh bone compared to the rest of their leg was a common adaptation that dinosaurs did in order to increase their speed. Because the thigh bone is short, the legs can complete one rotation quicker, 
thus having a quicker stride and thus running faster. Our next dinosaur is Colecan. This dinosaur lived in Brazil 71 million years ago. So this dinosaur lived alongside another dinosaur that was found this year called Titanomachia, which I talked about in my last video. So this dinosaur was an abelosaur, which is the same type of dinosaur that Carnotaurus was, who also lived in Brazil at the same time. These dinosaurs were really strange looking predators. They had very deep and flat heads, long legs, and arms shorter than T-Rex. These arms were so small, they couldn't even hold on to anything with them. But abelosaurs like Colecan didn't need big arms anyways. They would have been able to chase down their prey with their massive tail and leg muscles. Earlier, I mentioned how Chalkisaurus had a tail like predatory dinosaurs, which had more space for bigger tail muscles. Well, abelosaurs took this concept to the absolute extreme. Both Colecan and Carnotaurus had V-shaped tail vertebra, which would have fit more muscle than any other two-legged dinosaur of the same size. This would have allowed them to have explosive speed and catch pretty much anything in their environment. Another dinosaur described this year was Dornraptor, and it lived 192 million years ago in England. So this dinosaur was actually found way back in 1858, making it one of the first dinosaurs to have ever been discovered. But ever since then, people have been struggling to figure out exactly what it was. Initially, it was thought to be an early armored dinosaur called Scalitosaurus, but then they realized that the knee bone was actually more related to predatory dinosaurs. Then it was called Marasaurus, and it was lumped in with some predatory dinosaurs called Tetanurans. But then somebody else looked at it and thought it might be more related to a dinosaur called Coelophysis. Which brings us to today, where it was found to be an ancient ancestor of dinosaurs like Allosaurus and T-Rex, and it was officially renamed Dornraptor. Dinosaurs evolved into many iconic shapes and sizes over the course of millions of years. But some of the earliest dinosaurs all looked very similar. Most of them walked on two legs and there wasn't much variation in size. It took the extinction of competing prehistoric animals in millions of years of evolution to produce these iconic forms that helped them dominate the globe. Moving on, we have Tietosaurus, which lived in Brazil 125 million years ago. Tietosaurus is only known from half a thigh bone but the authors were able to figure out that it was an Elasmarian, just like Chalkisaurus. Even though half a bone has only been found of this dinosaur, it's actually super important to paleontology in Brazil. Tyanosaur is the first ornithopod to be found in Brazil. Ornithopods, which are beaked, duck-billed, and crested dinosaurs, are pretty rare in South America, especially in the Cretaceous. Most of South America was ruled by gigantic sauropods and theropods. But now with the discovery of Tyetosaurus and Chalkisaurus, it seems that there was a diversity of smaller dinosaurs that lived in the shadows of these giant ones. And finally, the last dinosaur on our list is Masankwa. This dinosaur lived in Zimbabwe 222 million years ago. It was actually found on an island in Lake Kariba, which is actually a very unusual place to find fossils. This dinosaur was an early sauropod, but this was way before sauropods walked on all fours and had really long necks. Back in the late Triassic, dinosaurs didn't dominate the world yet. They actually competed with all sorts of prehistoric reptiles. In the case of Masanqua, it would have competed with Iatosaurs, which were relatives of crocodiles that were covered in bony armor, and Synapses, which were some of the earliest ancestors of mammals. But Masanqua was able to have an advantage over these animals for two reasons. One, dinosaurs were the only animals to walk on two legs at the time. This allowed them to move faster, while also saving energy compared to walking on all fours. Two, Masankwa's long neck allowed it to reach up into the trees. Compared to its descendants, it wasn't that long of a neck. But compared to all the other animals that were living in its environment, it was easily one of the tallest animals. It was these early dinosaur features that put Masankwa and all of its relatives in the perfect position to take over the world after the Triassic extinction. Well, that's all nine dinosaurs. Tune in next time when we discuss the other dinosaurs that have been discovered this year, because they really just can't stop finding more dinosaurs. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should take my dinosaur quiz. It's 10 questions designed to test your knowledge of dinosaurs. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're still craving more dinosaur information, make sure you follow Daily Dino Guy on Instagram and Facebook. Once again, I'm Evan Jemnikar, and I'll see you in the next video.